Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode de Regards Connectés. Après New York, je vous emmène près de Boston sur le campus d'Harvard à la rencontre de Simon Mueller, cofondateur de The Future Society, également impliqué dans la régulation de l'intelligence artificielle au niveau international. Pour lui, mettre l'humain au centre est un leurre qui cache une transformation bien plus profonde qui s'apparenterait plus au remplacement de l'humain par la machine. Many people say that the sweet spot of you know this optimal decision making is human and machine together this hybrid decision making and I'm actually highly skeptical of that claim I think it is um, it is the way now and it might be the next for the next 10 years but I do see um, a clear trend towards machines and algorithms being able to make much more informed much better decisions um, and to overcome certain biases much better than humans I think humans are overall slowing machines down. I know this is a very depressing worldview, but I, I think everyone who, who says that you know, we'll, this is going to be the steady state where we have you know, hybrid teams um, of, of humans and machines making decisions, and, and, and uh, I think that is, um, that is, that is short-sighted. Because there, really no, there is really no theoretical boundary for making sense of a large data set, right? And machines are much better positioned, positioned for that. We have to ensure that um, they are bias-free, right? So we need to understand the, both the training data that is used to train the algorithm, but also the, the, the code of the algorithm, algorithm itself, right? Um, and uh, we have to find ways to to test to test it to rigor test it against biases um, it also has to be robust and it also has to be effective what I mean by that is um, the actual outcome has to be usable right it has to be it has to be um, uh, better than human decision making maker right so I think it also has to taste to 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 uh, um, to uh, 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 pass that test as well Right, so I think effectivity and robustness is is a is are are, um, are things that are typically not being taken seriously enough. Quand on pense aux algorithmes et aux produits d'intelligence artificielle, doit-on laisser faire et réguler ensuite Quel est le rôle de l'individu, de l'entreprise, des gouvernements Simon prône une régulation en trois étapes qui nous explique et imagine déjà la suite. So I think there are three different levels, right? The first level is let the market do its work, right? Everything that is unethical, unethical, um, is, in, you know, with this view, is already being regulated and taken care of by the market. You know, for example, if there are data breaches that become public, as we've seen, you know, with Equifax, for example, um, they will suffer reputational damage. Insofar as that is enough to keep the company from moving in the same direction, and and uh, you know, again and again. Um, I think that is, that, is, that is sufficient. Now, if that's not as sufficient, I think the second step is self-regulation, right? A, 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 um, the partnership of AI, for example, right, is, is a consortium of, of technology companies that think about AI and regulation and, and AI and, and, and normative aspects, right? But that's, again, that's self-regulation. And I think the third step, right, if all other things fail, I think should be government regulation, where we set standards and rules around uh, the ethical use of, of, of data, the storage, um, and, and the decision mechanisms we use. And the GDPR, for example, in Europe is a good example of, of, uh, of, that, of that third step. And humans suffer, you and me, we suffer from biases all the time because our operating system, our hardware really, has been created, you know, a tenth of thousand years ago. And so, you know, we are not, we're not, we're not perfectly adapted to the environment today. That's why we have the biases that, you know, psychologists and, and, and behavioral, uh, behavioral econ uh, economists are unveiling kind of day, day after day, right? The default bias, the uh, availability right the recency bias all of those things so we are we think that we are good in in making decisions but de facto we have uh, we are we are severely um, uh, kind of uh, negatively impacted by um, by 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 our hardware right by by the way our brains work and has been developed so um, I do think that that um, AI can help us make better decisions on the whole, right? Because um, you know we, we talked about biases that 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 might be 
um, driven by incorrect training sets or, or training sets that are uh, that are biased itself, right? But all, on the whole, I expect I expect um, digital and AI-driven decision systems to help us make much better decisions in terms of healthcare, um, you know, pandemic response, um, logistics, etc. And you can look around; you see the examples, right? In global health, for example, where you have you know medical imaging, um, and you, you you find out that machines are much better in making uh, in finding pat patterns, for example, right? Um, machines are also much better in, in kind of helping us look into the future right? and help, uh, help us not make you know, certain, certain kind of uh, predictions that are incorrect. Um, they help us kind of hold us accountable too. So I, I'm very optimistic, uh, very optimistic that AI makes, a, makes, makes this world and, and, and us as humanity uh, better. We have to make sure though that the systems that we have um, are and the, the gains right, and the proceeds from those systems are being shared in a way that everyone benefits from it. Right? We should not keep those in the hands of very few companies, but we have to make that um, available to, to, to most people.